Welcome back. I'm Gary Parr. And I'm Beth Ellicott. And you're listening to Fiber Talk, the twice-weekly podcast for needlework artists. And our artist this week from La Di Da Cross Stitch Designs, Lori Markovich. Hi, Lori. Hi, how are you? Well, we're doing okay. Thanks for joining us. This will be fun. Yeah. Thanks yes. for asking. Yep. And this, this week's show is sponsored by Sassy Jack Stitchery. And here's a word from Kim. Sassy Jack Stitchery is happy to be a sponsor of Fiber Talk. We so appreciate all the heart that Gary and team put into their show, and we always look forward to each episode. Thank you, Fiber Talk, for all you do for our needlework world. Sassy Jack's is a vibrant needlework shop located in the mountains of western North Carolina, just north of Asheville. We're in the process of moving our shop to its forever home in a historic folk Victorian on the national listing of historic places just three miles down the road from our current location. While we're moving, you can find us in all our normal online haunts, our website at sassyjackstitchery.com, Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. We can't wait to open our doors and welcome you into our new old home. It was always a plan to be in this beautiful old house, and we've invested a huge chunk of our hearts into its renovation. Every renovated board, every push-button light switch, every old porch swing has lovingly, mostly, <laughs> been placed there with our own hands. It has a wonderful, warm, welcoming feel about the place already, and your stitchy joy and laughter with friends will really make it home for Sassy Jacks. So look for us online for the next few months, as we'll be filling online and phone orders as per usual, and we'll be looking forward to the spring at the Baird House in Asheville, North Carolina. When the time comes, we'll leave the light on for you, just like your mom did when you were a kid, so you'll know it's time to come home. Now on to the show. Hey, thanks, Kim. And, yeah, be sure and uh, please support our sponsors, and uh, particularly Sassy Jack Stitchery this week. Um, Kim, uh, yeah, that's that's the go-to place right there. And if you get a chance to go to Weaverville, uh, you definitely want to want to go visit that. That's a beautiful country, nice little town, great restaurants, so um, take advantage of that. All right, Laurie. The, yep. the, <laughs> the story about... You got started designing because there was a cross-stitch pattern in a printer you bought for your actually, family business? Actually, I didn't even buy it. I, my father passed away, so my mom ended up running a urethane business, which none of us knew anything about. Um, <laughs> but we didn't really have much choice. And so we decided to be modern and learn how to use a computer. And we were typing invoices up until then. So, okay, went to a class. Um, realized we needed a printer. We didn't really know anything at all. So we just, my mom picked whatever she picked up. It came back and it had a, a program with it that had, there, there was uh, quilting and cross stitch and a few other things. I think the idea was to promote computers at home. It really didn't exist that much in 1997. So, um, it was a factory and I wasn't really impressed with their lunchtime talk. So, <laughs> so I stayed in the office and played around with these programs and started designing cross stitch. Oh, that, I mean, that is, that is such a random thing to have loaded in a printer. That's, uh, <laughs> yes. well, it was a disc and I still actually have it because it was just so bizarre that it would be there. Yeah. But, um, you know, my mom had a print. I mean, I had a printer. I could print, I could do the stuff. So it was. Maybe a little of my dad's influence in there, like find something else to do and get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> but, mm. However that went. But I did have an art degree, so I wasn't just coming out of nowhere with it. Oh, okay, because that was that was the other question I had for you is, mm -hmm. is do you have an art background? Because to pick up a, a design program and start creating things, you got to have something to go with that. For sure. And um, I'm from Wisconsin. We're pretty cheap. So I'd go to the library and I'd look up patterns and think, oh, I'm not going to pay for that. I'll make my own. <laughs> and um, and I did. <laughs> so so that was kind of fun. Well, that's that's a that's a great way to start. Now, had you been stitching uh, prior to that, or? Yes, I have. Um, oh, since probably the 80s, okay. uh, the 1900s. <laughs> um, <laughs> but. But, you know, just the little stuff that you get at the store and little projects and stuff, home with kids. So you got to do something. Yeah, yeah. But not, not to the level where you were ready to leap into design. Absolutely not. Oh, okay. 
No. Nope. And and actually that was quite fun. I spent a lot of time at the library doing research and it kind of um, opened up an opportunity for me that I had no idea was even anything. So um, working with the local shop and Chris from Norton Crafts was really helpful, encouraging me and coming up with, you know, 10 or 12 different designs to get started, to have a name, to learn how to do a logo and stuff. That was a pretty big deal. So take us take us through that then. So so you have this software. First, you got to figure out how to use it. Yeah, yeah, which I'm sure that was not easy back then. Um, you know, it's the same. It's the same pattern maker program I still use. Oh, it's is it? Great. <laughs> it is. It's not that hard. <laughs> okay, okay. So, so you start doing some designs. Now you, you play around. You uh, design them and stitch them yourself, and uh, I sure did. learned learned what whether they worked or not. Yep. <laughs> yep. I had to. Well, and my big loan was I had to borrow money to buy frames. Yeah. So, because you got to photograph them and sure have a camera, and I mean, it's a lot of a lot of different steps to it that I had to learn every step along the way, and luckily, I was able to do it. Yeah. Now, did you so did he, you uh, uh, come up with these early designs and and think right away I can sell these, or did you just use them as to give you some give you something to stitch? Mostly giving me something to stitch. Yeah. Um. And then I would take them into our local store um, looking for linen or threads or something. And they patted me on the back and said, you should talk to this person and you should do this. And I did. So I'm glad I did. Oh, so they, so then obviously they were good enough out of the gate then that uh, you caught the store owner's eye and they saw something there. Yep, they did. That's pretty neat. Yeah. <laughs> Because a lot of people do a lot of designs before anything shows, uh, you know, before anything actually uh, gets sold. So, so did Agreed. you did you just uh, sell through the local store then? I did not, because um, <laughs> I didn't even have a clue what this industry was. No. So I talked. To, <laughs> so I talked to Chris, and she said, "Well, if I could come up with ten things, she would she would distribute for me." So I came up with ten things and sent them off to her and. She did. <laughs> and um, then the local shop wanted to get some too, but it really started through Chris. So this Chris Dodd at, at Norton, Norton Crafts then? Yep. Yeah. So, well, you just made a whole lot of designers jealous because you, you, <laughs> you right out of the gate you had a distributor and everything. That's <laughs> That, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so did you have to print your own patterns then at that time and put you the bet photos on and and all those steps you bet okay. yep bring in your roll of film and get it developed and hope you got one decent one on the roll right. <laughs> oh that's know. that's right that yeah there would not have been a digital camera at that time <laughs> there would not have been oh <laughs> yes and so i remember i did one and i love the photo but it had a little white dot on it so i had to buy a marker and touch that dot on like 200 of them. Oh, jeez. Cut <laughs> them out and paste them on. I mean, it was, we've come a long way, baby. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's, yeah, yeah, that's just it. Because, I mean, we just take, you know, whip out your phone and take a picture for granted now. For right. sure. Right. And delete them. And you can, you know, it's easy. You just go through. You don't like it. You delete them. I was just listening to someone talk about how Kodak was this monolith you know of a mm -hmm. you know with film and then now everybody's digital no one hardly anyone uses yeah. film anymore no yeah no. Cool, cool. And, and I, I left art school before the computer craze and so a lot of us left with really no skill <laughs> nothing that related to what was currently going on in the art world so it was interesting to have to reboot and take kind of a leap there yeah well, yeah, I was curious about that too, uh, because I mean, I was—I've been a magazine editor for a long time, and mm -hmm. I remember those days when uh, computer—well, just a PC, even to edit copy, was such a big deal. And mm -hmm. then I remember artists who uh, had never even looked at a computer trying to learn how to lay out magazines and and do art with computers, and and, and same like you, it simply had no background whatsoever. And no. you know, taking classes and those those great big thick four inch thick books that you know that we used to buy and uh, just trying to learn. So that's um, 
yeah, it, it's a it's a double commitment. You're trying to create art, and then you're trying to do it with a, a completely foreign medium. Is... <laughs> yes, and right. and there and remember too all the all the oh boy the controversy of should it even be in the art world? Should yes should we be using computers? It was a big big deal, right. Um, Right. And and it's taken us, I think, about 20 years to figure out how to make this work with podcasts and YouTubes and, you know, really using it to market where even shop owners didn't want to be online at first. Yeah. Um, they they fought it. I mean, some fought it. They didn't couldn't see the future of it. And And now, luckily, just even leaving Nashville market in March, I think that was the one thing I came away with from that market with is that we figured out how to use this media. Finally, finally. <laughs> yes. And it felt good. It felt good. Yeah. Yeah. These days, if you don't embrace it, you really get left behind now. It's, um, oh. yeah. Yeah. And this right. stupid pandemic is really, uh, <laughs> well, I mean, it, it's, it's forced people to get, familiar with technology and and i think well, i've said it before i think one of the positive things that will come out of this pandemic and there will be very few of them uh will be that in the needlework world but in in the work world uh, in general is the uh better grasp of what we can do with technology and uh, you know, meetings online and uh, communication we're just going to be all so much better at it that um, right no doubt about that. We're Zooming tomorrow for Thanksgiving. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, and we are. <laughs> but, uh, but the pandemic also, good thing for the technology, because without it, I we would really have suffered. <laughs> yeah. Right. Now, how, talk about how back in those days, because then, you know, back then we didn't really even have, uh, we certainly didn't have social media and Internet like we have today. Uh, talk about marketing your pieces. Did you just rely on the distributor or did you do some things on your own to get uh, your business going? Well, mostly distributors, but we printed catalogs with, you know, went to market with a sheet and it took me three years to get into market because <laughs> there were waiting lists and I'm not even going to go there. But <laughs> so we came with a catalog and they could purchase charts, but they could take that catalog home and see if, their customers wanted to make purchases, and, and and that was that. I remember seeing those catalogs at, <laughs> at, at cross stitch stores. You'd go in and you'd look through them. People would say, "Well, I did. You know, we have the stuff from Market, but here's some other stuff that they have. You know, and you could order that way." Right. Um. And Witchelt, I believe, had sales reps going to different shops. And if you were signed up with them, you sent them so many free charts or something, and each salesperson had one of yours or ah, so long time ago. But they would go from shop to shop and peddle the wares. So old-fashioned. Just so old-fashioned. Oh, I'm telling you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you. <laughs> now you just click a button. Yep. It only took 20 years to learn what that button does. Yeah. <laughs> So then when, when did you say, all right, I'm going to have a formal business and start selling these things? Was that pretty much then or did a period of time go by where you just toyed with it and then decided? I, either I gotta... uh, agreed. Yep. No, I, I really did not like my job. <laughs> <laughs> not at all. <laughs> and I liked the people I worked with. That was great, but not really the actual job. So, um, my my goal in my head was as soon as I could make as much money as I made at my job, I could quit. Uh -huh. And that took probably two years. Uh -huh. I didn't make pretty much money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah. I used the printing and I put charts together in my downtime there. And so it worked out okay. Um, and I didn't make so much money or I didn't love that job enough that I minded leaving, but um, but it would have been different if I loved that job. You know, it would have been hard to to break away and yeah, right. right. But then, but not but not liking it gave you the impetus to move forward in your design work. I would think I didn't look back. No, <laughs> 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 it 
it's factory work. It's dirty. It was gross. It was right. Nuts. <laughs> right. It was not good. <laughs> Did, did your mother uh, sell the company? Uh, or no, hang? she ended up giving it to one of my brothers. Oh. Um, still exists. <laughs> God bless you. I don't miss it one bit at all. <laughs> no. Uh. No, but, you know, you look at, at the path that you've taken and you think, well, this got me here and this got me there and this got me to the next place. And, and thank you, Dad, for, you know, putting me in that spot so I could get that printing program and and – had a really pretty good life from it. So, yeah. so that's cool. Yeah. No, you know, that's, that's what's so fun about doing these podcasts is, is the different paths that people travel to get mm -hmm. to where they are. And, uh, I mean, that you certainly have a unique one, but, um, uh, it, we, you know, it works out. So, um, yeah. so, so, and so you get started and you got a distributor and, uh, are you then on some kind of a mission to put out X number of charts a year or <laughs> are you just letting it flow out of your head? Well, sort of both. My goal was a design a month. Mm. That's healthy. <laughs> and, I, and I did for a while. I, I, in my, in my mind, I needed to have an impact on the market. I tried to do that um, by putting a lot out there. There was also this fear that the internet was going to steal all your work that and and it was not a blind fear um and so i thought in my head well i'll just keep making new things so that copying them wouldn't have the impact mm. so i don't know if it worked but <laughs> <laughs> but it produced a lot of stuff now those that was the days then the early days for you was the days when there were cross stitch stores as many of those as gas stations in most towns uh yes that that so that gives you a, a really strong market but then uh you know as those faded away how did you adapt to that i think the whole market really was dumbfounded um i think there were probably 10 pretty lean years in there with shop owners as well i mean as some shops faded away other shops obviously picked up their business but it wasn't on every corner and people weren't thinking about cross stitch as much. Um, and there were some lean times. Yeah. And, and part of it was just, we just got to hold on to this baton so we can pass it to the next generation. <laughs> and I think we did. What, what was it that, when did you see it start to recover from that downtime? I would say, mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe five years ago. Okay. Um, it seemed like YouTube, or I, I'm sorry, FlossTube and your podcast and a lot of just using the media better made that turn, I, I think. Mm -hmm. So there was an extended period there where there wasn't, it, it was pretty slow going. It was. There were the addicts. I'm being part of that. Um, and I taught plenty of classes and there were plenty of people interested, but it wasn't, it just wasn't as um, economically feasible as it, as it had been in before. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. So, and I'm sure it made a lot of people not be able to do it, to be in the industry. I mean, if, if you had, I didn't have kids depending on me, so it was different. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. I, I wonder how many designers went on to something else. And mm -hmm. and, we'll, you know, and we'll never see them again because they're off somewhere else creating art, and uh, or just, just having a job. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Basic right. economics. Right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's. Uh, and, and you mentioned and you mentioned too the the fact that the of stealing. I mean, I know there was at least one designer who basically said she was closing up shop because of that. Her designs were being so. Stolen. I mean, copied yeah. and whatever. I, yes. And oh, here's my thought about it. I mean, we can all go on the website and we can p pick up probably just about any design we can think of and get a copy of it. But does that really take a sale away? Not necessarily. Just because you can get a copy of it doesn't mean you're going to stitch it or you would have bought it in the first place. Um, 
I don't have a good answer for, but somehow I have to not make myself crazy either. Yeah. <laughs> right, 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 right. So, so. That is, that know. is an interesting angle though. People who would steal the stuff, would they ever have bought it in the first place? That's an interesting angle. I had, mm-hmm. I had, I've had plenty of arguments over the internet with people who <laughs> found a copy of something in the trash at the library and thought they could have it. And, and Huh. How do you how do you just you know fine take it whatever <laughs> <laughs> but but you really should buy it <laughs> or somebody who would say they have this great design but they don't know what the picture looks like and I said well you should be able to turn it over <laughs> well, <no. laughs> I said well I'll be happy to send you the photo for seven dollars <laughs> there there we go <laughs> they didn't want <laughs> they didn't want the photo <laughs> no, no. so. That's just, you can't take it too serious, I guess. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. And, and, you know, there's always a few bad eggs, but, you know, hopefully the rest, uh, you know, I've, I found over time, most needle workers, they, they want to support the business. They want to keep people designing because we have lost a few and, yes. and, you're, and people are sad. They're like, wait, I can't. And I'm like, well, you know. And, and that's, that was part of finding our feet with the technology too, I think. And just to find a perspective for it. Um, right. And just keep cranking out the stuff. I think I was fast enough to uh, make them have to work really hard. <laughs> how, how did your design work evolve? Did, did you, uh, have you always done the style you're doing today? Or have you seen it shift and change with time? I would hope it shifts and changes um, because people shift and change. Um, I started out loving reproduction samplers, but just, I don't know. It wasn't my thing. So then I just took parts of it and kind of made it my own. Um, I had years when my grandkids were small and we sang songs and I did cross stitches of songs and and all kinds of things that are in your life, and I guess they just come out in an artistic way. Um, hopefully it's always different and changing. I don't yeah, know. I, I, I enjoyed how you – reproduction samplers and then how you use those kinds of things to create original samplers. It's mm-hmm. a, it, it, you really do a nice job of, of pulling elements together and, and making that work. And how much of that is – is uh, literally borrowing mo- motifs from uh, reproduction samplers and how much of that is modifying motifs to the way you want them and how did you do that mix? Good question. I don't know. Uh, Excellent. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think just playing around with it, trying this, trying that, see what works better. Some things were successful, some things weren't. <laughs> I don't know. I yeah. guess that's maybe just how the personal journey goes. Okay. All right. Well, well that's, you know, I mean, that you know, some artists, it, it just happens to them. And others mm-hmm. others have a method and follow that method, and it works for them. And uh, so for you, it just kind of flows out of your head and and uh, works or doesn't then. Okay. I think so. And, and, I'm no, and I'm no judge on which will – be successful and which won't. I have no idea. Do you guys have usually have someone who's like a sounding board that you say, hey, I've got this design. Can you give me an honest reaction to it? Do you have that kind of person or are you? Nope. Just flying solo. Okay. <laughs> yep. And be, partly because, and partly I don't want that. Not to hurt <laughs> feeling, but, but it's my journey. And okay. you can't design for someone else. You got to do it for you. I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, and okay, I've got a question for you. Do you keep like a sketchbook or uh, like a, a notebook with ideas? Tons of oh. them. Okay. Tons of them. But I throw them away. <laughs> I don't keep them. Don't away. Look at them all. <laughs> um, I, I always have a file, you know, ideas on my, you know, on the desktop. But and some things I work on for two years, and some things I. Done in a week. You never know. Right. You never right. Know. So your ideas just, do they just come to you? Do you like, do you, 
you know, you said you pull them from reproduction samplers too, but, and they come from songs, but you just all of a sudden it's like you see an idea and you sketch it or. Sometimes I don't, sometimes I'll wake up from a dream and be like, Oh man, that'd be cool. And kind of write down what it is and then look at it in the morning and go, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> but, but sometimes something will spark you. I mean, I did um, La Noah's Ark and it came from um, watching a documentary on woodcuts and stuff. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's so cool. And something came from it. So you never know. Okay. <laughs> the Your color palette is uh, is very pleasing to the eye. And what and you use the words primitive and whimsical in your, to describe your designs, but uh, the the color palette has uh, is it a mellowness to it? I'm not sure what it is, but uh, for me, just looking at all of your designs, that there's just a real nice relaxing tone. I guess it is to the colors. Is that that's just you? Uh, you... I think so. Um, I. I like colors. I like putting colors that shouldn't go together together. Um, um, I work on colors a lot, um, laying them out and swapping them out. And I probably know every single DMC color there is. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I usually play around with it until I get an emotion. Okay. And then, and then I'll think now it's speaking because I've had an emotion. So, eh, but everyone's got their way. I don't know. Hmm. It's just part of, part of the hardest part about designing is there's a five million zillion choices. How do you narrow it down to five? <laughs> yeah. Or two or that. So it can be overwhelming, but. And you'd think doing it longer would be easier, but I don't think it is. I think it's even harder. Are you always stretching the envelope? Do you, do you find yourself trying to... I to? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just did a piece releasing now, um, Nutcrackers 3, and it's kind of bright, and it's kind of bold, and it's graphic. And it's like, huh, where'd that come from? <laughs> <laughs> so, how do you know? <laughs> yeah, well... That's uh, that's what works. Oh, where where did where does the name Lottie Da come from? What? <laughs> um, let's see. That was back with Chris saying that I needed to have a logo and a name and like a get you know get my act together here, and um, I had no idea what direction to go to. I didn't know enough about the industry, which was probably good. Um, and so I sat down with a piece of paper and wrote out every word I could think of that was interesting. And I had a good couple pages worth, and Lottie Dot came up, and it was really a nice visual set of letters. Mm. And I thought, well, and that's that. And off you go. Okay. Mm -hmm. Talk, talk <laughs> about your talk about your an, your animal designs. I really like what you do with animals. Ooh, do I do animals? I suppose. Yeah. Huh. Well, I love animals. I have lots of rescue dogs. I've had lots of rescue dogs. Um, luckily, my little dachshund is sleeping downstairs because she's really irritating <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> um, um, I don't know. I suppose that's just um, a drawing degree will help you draw animals, I guess. Well, I okay, but well, what about those those um, rabbits? I was looking at those. Oh, the rabbits. The I think those are just, I, but I'm, I'm interested. It's like, okay, interested in construction of things. So I'm thinking those would be just so cute at Easter to have out or at the springtime to have stitched up and out. And so where'd you come up with that idea? I don't know. Um, <laughs> I like animals, but not necessarily as the cutesy little animals. And mm -hmm. so, and so I guess I tried to do them. I tried to make them more realistic and then they just kind of get stylized in their own course of time. But, right, uh, but it, I, do I don't really like cutesy. That cutesy, I'm not, it's not kind mm -hmm. of what I like. But I, I looked at those and I thought, I like those. Those are really nice looking. I don't know. I just, there's something about the, the way I, the ears were or something, the length of them. Yes. And I think it's because they're grown up. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, their grown-up version. <laughs> right. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how that all came about, but but I know what I like. <laughs> yeah. Now, do you stitch all of your own uh, designs, or do you have uh, people do it for you? I stitch almost all of them. There's maybe four that I haven't. Plus all the classes, projects, and stuff like that, too. So I'm a pretty maniac stitcher. <laughs> <laughs> and I do other people's stuff, so. Oh, you do? That's interesting. Do. Yeah. My walls downstairs, I have maybe well, a dozen or so nice, good size samplers. Um, and I used to have my stuff on the walls, but then I kept thinking, oh, I don't really like this, and I don't really like this, and I should change that. And I thought, oh, my gosh, <laughs> you can't live like that. <laughs> so down so, they come. Yeah. Somebody else's design problem, not mine. <laughs> now, do, you, do you have a studio there at home? I have a bedroom, yeah, upstairs. Okay. Yep, with... With way too much stuff in it, I'll tell you. Yeah, you're not alone there. Does it does it no. stay contained there, or is it elsewhere in the house too? It's contained. Oh, ah. okay. <laughs> it is contained. <laughs> well, not really. Maybe not as much as I think. <laughs> it might be a little in the attic. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that's okay. Not, that's okay. Yeah. Not too bad. Yeah. Because I mean, easy to easy to have it spread around the house as you're doing things. Yes. You know, and I've got probably over 200 designs. So, and I have most of them. So, they live in the attic. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I totally understand that. <laughs> so, talk talk about your teaching. Uh, yeah. Were you doing live classes and now doing online, or what? Where are you at with that? I am not. Um, all the classes kind of fell apart, which is fine. I'm coming right outside of Chicago, which is COVID central here. We've had it twice. So um, so it was fine that it was canceled. I did um, one of the projects, though, I did with Teresa. Um, and rather than just release it for the EGA that it was supposed to be with, um, released it to everybody, and that was quite successful and a lot of fun. So um, I did a project also with um, Shepherd's Needle, some strawberries, which I had never done those before. So rather than just have it be a small class, we released it as um, a chart or a kit to anyone. Mm -hmm. um, so um, I all I could tell you is go on YouTube and learn how to do it because – that's my bad. That's what I did. <laughs> How, what's that? What's that like to collaborate with other designers? Is that uh, do you just got to find the right person so you can work together? Uh, um, that was a shop, not a designer. Those were shops, not okay. designers. Oh, okay. Oh, Teresa. Yep, but that was as a shop. Yeah. Oh, you mean you mean um, Shakespeare's peddler or right. Teresa Kitten Stitcher? Okay, Kitten Stitcher then. Okay. The same gal. She's the same, person. But, She's the same gal, but. Yeah, but, but we right. didn't collaborate on the design. It was just, she was actually looking for people who wanted to maybe put out some kits. Um, and I thought, well, I just canceled this project and checked with the EGA and said, yeah, let's do that. So so that worked out really, really well for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and, right, so, yeah, I, I guess I got to ask you, so are you just not interested in doing um, a Zoom class or... You just haven't explored that? I think, uh, I don't know if I know. Um, I've been doing plenty of other projects, and maybe it just hasn't lent itself. I think that things got canceled too late to really make that the plan, um, because we still had to get kits together and shipping, and it just the logistics never seemed to have worked out. Right. So I think we're hoping next year, I think I'm still teaching the same classes I was supposed to teach this last year. <laughs> and we're just going to try it in 2021. Yeah. Okay. And hopefully that'll be good. I think so. Yeah. And then, and now we're going into it with the attitude of, if this is a bust, we'll do a Zoom backup. And just knowing that right from the start, go ahead and get supplies and get kits ready and 
some follow through with it because if the class is going to be canceled, you don't want to put all your money into kits that are going to sit in your room. Right. <laughs> right. So, so it just, it was just a crazy, crazy year. Yeah, no doubt about that. Well, and that you, you talk about getting, getting just simply getting materials to put kits together is, uh, uh, yes. I think it's, I, I don't know if it's gotten worse, but it sure doesn't seem to be getting any better. Well, you know, uh, there's good and bad in that because it's a lot of people out there stitching. Yes. So, so that's good. <laughs> getting supplies. Well, that's kind of hard. So I don't know. Yeah, no, that, uh, yeah, there's no doubt that, uh, this is, this pandemic has been a, a huge shot in the arm for this hobby. There's no question about that. If people are stitching everywhere and stitching a lot of it, you know? Yes. Yes. Right. right. Yep. And that's wonderful. And, and that was actually leaving Nashville in March. That, that trend had happened already. Yeah. Um, so it was on its way and this just put it into kind of overdrive, um, <laughs> And thank goodness that shops were able to stay open through it. I think the majority have and and switched to online sales and had a little in in store stuff. But I don't know. I think that kind of comes with the waves. Um, open, closed, but yeah. but it's kept this industry alive. Thank yeah. you, internet. Sure has. Yep. I'll be I'll be curious. It'd be a fun survey to do uh, after these pandemic subsides and we find some kind of a normal life again. It'd be <laughs> interesting to do a survey for how many people actually reduced the number of projects they have in their stash during the time. Or... No one's going to answer that question. <laughs> no, that's a terrible question, Gary. <laughs> you can well, see, see, see I, I think I know the answer and that it would be zero. You know, I think we all probably did a lot of online shopping. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have all kinds of things we didn't think we needed before. Right. That's right. That's right. Yeah, no, I have no delusions that people actually stitched what's in their stash. No, I, I'm pretty sure of it. <laughs> did you reduce sure. your stash? No. No. <laughs> did you increase your stash? You bet I did. <laughs> yeah. Always, always. Yeah. No. Yeah. Um yeah, we're lucky that we hung through this. I think we're going to make it through the other end. Um, Nashville in March will be, or in May will be kind of fun. Yeah. Coming from Wisconsin, I'm excited because we usually have a snowstorm to go through. So <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. May, May for us. Uh, well, Beth and I are both in northern Illinois, so we're not too far from oh. you. Okay, right. Uh, gotcha. Yeah, um, yeah that, uh, the weather should be better. No question about mm -hmm. it. Yeah. Mm hmm and that's, you know, that's, of course, I mean, we, I hope that by then we're able to have it. You know, uh, we just got the one in in March last year, just in time. Um, yep. That was, that was a huge break. Yeah. Two two weeks later, probably, probably would have had to think twice. Yeah. Oh, for sure. We probably, in hindsight, probably shouldn't have been there. <laughs> no, no, probably not. <laughs> no, but we didn't know. And we actually got in an accident, a bad accident on our way home. Oh, no. Oh, no. Yeah, totaled my car. Oof, that was oh. terrible. Oh. Ended up there an extra day right outside of Nashville. We didn't get very far. Um, but made it home safe and sound. But it was sort of like ever since that moment, you go, I think we entered bizarro world. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> We certainly have. Yep. Yeah, because I remember at Nashville, uh, are we shaking hands? Are we hugging? Are we, uh, what, yeah, that, those questions were starting to come up, and, and now it, you don't even ask the question. It's just, no, no. Don't, don't touch. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and, and, but I do remember going with some really um, powerful disinfectant, and I cleaned the whole hotel room, like mm. top to bottom. <laughs> I don't know if it did any good, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But I think I think we were just ahead of really the explosion explosion of it. Right, right, um, yeah. Just got it. Just got it in. Just just got yeah. it. Yeah. So hopefully in May it'll be just afterwards. I'm hoping to, and I think that it's nice to know ahead of time. Um, you know, the hard thing for me about the whole pandemic was not knowing one week from the next. Are we yeah. doing this? Are we not? Is this? Is that? I don't know. Uh, you know. Right. Right. So I think we will make, we will make may work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it got a lot easier when people just said, all right, forget it. Let's just shut everything down, shut down all these yeah. events and be done with it instead of trying to guess whether we can or not. And then, yeah, because you yeah. can't be in limbo all the time. Right. All right. Yeah, that was difficult. Yeah. What When it comes to Nashville, mm -hmm. yes. uh, which I assume is, is by far your biggest show, do you target mm -hmm. a number of designs? Do you hold designs? How do you approach that? in terms of, of the flow of material you produce all year? I usually hold some stuff. Um, um, I'll usually have a fall release, sometimes a Christmas release, and then up until Nashville. Okay. So, and I might have stuff like in the drawing board in the works, but um, I don't usually release anything. I have in the past and nothing, everyone's holding onto their cash for the show, so. <clears throat> oh, I see. So it doesn't, it really doesn't do you any good. No, it hasn't that yeah. I've noticed. Mm -hmm. No, so might as well just hold on to it. And do, do you have, as you go through the year, do you have, uh, say, a design comes to your head and you put it down? Do you say, wait a minute, I'm hanging on to this one. This is going to be a good one for Nashville? Or... <laughs> I used to, and then I was usually wrong. So <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't do that anymore. Matter of fact, the one design that I thought, I think I'm not going to bring this one with. To Nashville was my bestseller, so I I know nothing. Oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> I give up. <laughs> I don't I don't think you're alone there. I think most designers would say the same thing. It's just hard to and predict. It is, right. and, and it feels uh, you just have to have the confidence. Just throw it out there. It used to be where you were paying thousands of dollars to have stuff printed. You you know because you you had to have 2000 printed in order to get a good price. And, and, you know, that, that whole world going on yeah. and now you just print as you go. So you don't, you're not going to lose that much money, even if it's a fail. Mm -hmm. So, so that helps take the edge off a little bit too. Yeah. So, uh, so, uh, uh <laughs> compared to the printer you started with a powerful, <laughs> pretty powerful one in the house there to print with. You know, I just, printer oh, <laughs> it's, a, okay. it's a color laser jet or um laser printer and i've had it's like my third one they last me about a year i was gonna say i bet you burned through them pretty good yeah that's okay yeah that's okay the office store knows me well yeah yeah <laughs> yeah yeah well laurie this sure has been fun thank you yeah it's been great i was really nervous to sit down and chat and you made it nice and easy. So yeah. thank you. Well, that's good. Yep. All right. So, uh, la -dee da at, uh, what is it? La -dee da dot net. Dot net. Yep. With hyphens yep. in life, hyphens between the la, the D and the da. Don't go there with me. <laughs> <laughs> that might've been a mistake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But it's quite graphic. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah, yeah. So there we are, ladida.net to see all of them and uh, hit hit up uh, Sassy Jacks or your local needlework store for uh, the designs. And Lori, thank you. Appreciate the time. Yeah.